Today we're going to make some bass house and this is what it sounds like. And that's just my track I have released. Wow, actually, it was released on the 28th, so let me know what you think of it. The links are down below. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the project and we're just gonna look at each layer, why I did what I was doing, and hopefully you learned something. Let's get into the project. Okay, FL Studios is a mess. I am so sorry about this project. I tried to organize it, um, but let's just look down it right now. Honestly, the thought behind a lot of this stuff is just throwing it in and seeing if it works. I've got a massive sample library that I've built up over the years I've been producing now, almost six years, and this is a function of that. So the way I produce is I just throw shit in and hope it works. So there's not much thought behind it. Let's just look at how I've begun, and I really try to work fast when I'm producing. So the first thing I did was put down the kick, and I don't care if it sounds good or bad to begin with, I just put something down. For this, it probably changed like five different times. Anyway, I just pushed on and got everything else done. But let's look at the kick first. There's two layers on the kick. There's two completely useless ones that I obviously used before. So we've got one kick by me. So no one has got that sample, sadly. And then we've got this one here as well that adds the top to it. So let's go to the processing on this. A little bit of an EQ. Um, yeah, I took some of the bass out of it. It felt a bit punchy. The other one has absolutely no processing on it at all. And the other thing I've done to it is I've tapered off the bass a little bit on this. There's the kick. That's the first thing I got down. Second up, I got the collapse done. Five layers. Actually, rubbish, six layers. There they are. So the way I process these, bear with me sorry about this, is very simple actually. I cut frequencies that I didn't like out of each clap, some of them didn't even require any processing, and then I put them to a final bus. It just has an EQ on it, so I cut some of the frequencies out of it. Listening back actually, it sounds better without it, but it's released now, so whatever. That's my theory of how I build drum sounds. I do it by layering samples. So if I need more highs in my clap, I'm not gonna boost the EQ, I'm gonna add a clap layer that's got more highs. Basically, that's how it goes. I can show you them individually if you really want. That's more of a low one. That's definitely got more white noise. That doesn't even exist, basically. Same with that one. A bit more highs. And that one doesn't do much either. I'm sorry if I waste your time explaining some of these samples because some of them are literally not doing anything. So next up, I make my hi-hat loops and I usually make them from scratch and then use uh, top loops as well later. But what we've got is, I believe, five, six, seven, are you kidding? Seven layers of hi-hat. And by no means do you have to do this. I've had good tracks that have had two layers or even one layer. I just couldn't get the sound I wanted and following my methods I just layered till I got it basically. So let's look at the layers. The, some of them are just simply leveled and distorted a bit. Some of them are panned, hard left and hard right. And then they're going to a final bus with a transient processor on to just shape it just a little bit. So it's just a little bit tighter. So after I've got the definite sounds down, I start getting creative with other little bits. So let's look at the start. All of these sounds around this area are like the extra bass house parts that really give it some energy. So this is the first thing I did. I put down this sound here. And I've got this as well. And this. So quite a lot of layers. Some of them are from my own sample library, which is cool. I want to show you first before I proceed though, the sidechain sound. Now, everything that needs to be sidechained is being sidechained very hard. So everything's being sidechained as one. And I'm able to get a really tight sidechain. So there's the first noise. Let's just look at all of these little effects 
to see what everything's doing. And trust me, like the processing on this is nothing. It's like just taking the right samples. Again, I wish I could show you my process of just making this. I literally go through my library, drag and drop, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll try shift it. I'll maybe try pitching it. I'll try slapping like an OTT on it maybe. And then if it really doesn't work, I'll just delete it and try something new. There's no thought, and I, I liked, like, like some people might like to pretend there's some thought behind this stuff, but for me, there's nothing. I just throw it down and see if it works. So let's listen to it with all the drums in now. As a whole, we've got this. So this stem here is from the acapella and I basically chopped it up and used generic bleeding mode to allow me to chop it up without it popping at the end there. And I also allow for this kind of extension at the end. So after I got down a bunch of bass sounds and percussion sounds, I put this vocal down. Let's look at the processing on it. We've got CLA vocals, we've got an EQ cutting some harsh frequencies, we've got another EQ cutting some other harsh frequencies, and it's just a perfect layer at the end to keep the energy high. Next up, we're gonna look at everything down here, got a little reverse here, a classic snare roll, and we've got a bit of a pause here with the drums, and you'll hear the bass come in at that point. It's good to try and leave space, so I left a whole bar of almost everything apart from the claps and the bass. The kick is completely gone as well, and then we're back into the second half of the drop. The second half, I typically add just more to fill it out. So right now we've got alarm sounds. Kind of generic, but whatever. And we've got this weird sound I made from a different project. Honestly, it is just throwing things in to see if it works. We also have the shaker. And then we've got a classic house loop. Trust me on this, the processing, look, this isn't even going to the master. The, pro, the processing on this is super minimal. I don't do much with my drums. If I can't get the good, a good sample, if I can't get it to sound right, I'm just gonna try a different sample till it works. No secret there. Make a good sample library. Get your samples organized, know which ones are good, and really don't be scared to swap in and out samples quite liberally. So let's look at the bass. So this for me was my favorite part. It took absolutely ages for me to get it. We have a few layers, some of them serum, some of them a plugin called Bass Master. And let's just look at the layers individually. First up, when I'm making a bass line or a lead or anything like that, I usually make a bus from square one and I make sure to have a compressor on it. You'll notice that this is compressing quite hard and then we try and layer it up. So first layer, percussion. The way I've done that is a bit of EQ to cut the bass. And then I've distorted it with Fruity Blood Overdrive. This just compresses it essentially to make sure that the level is quite limited. First layer done, we've got the second layer which is serum. And if you wanna look at the preset itself, wow, okay, it's simpler than I thought. It's a triangle wave. I must have made it from scratch and then distorted it with a great plugin called Trash. It's just on a preset in Trash and then being EQ'd quite dramatically actually to make the highs pop out. Without processing, it sounds like this. With the other layer. Pretty cool. We've got one more layer. 
and it's kind of plucky. We've got an EQ, Camel Crush, and then another EQ on it. The final layer is kind of useless, to be honest, but together, it's really thick. We have a tape stop effect at the end there, that's controlled by this. And it's being filtered up by DJM Filter, that's a free plugin on the bass bus. And that's the reason I bust my basses or any other instrument. Same with the reverb, I put a reverb after the delay and it comes up as the filter comes up as well and it just lets you do that with it. And at the end, um, the outro, it's just filtered with quite a high resonance and the resonance gives it this kind of growly sound that I really like. So all together, we have this. and then we're into the breakdowns. All right, thank you for watching this video. This is my second video and I've already got a new camera and I've already been trying to edit it a bit better. So please, if you like that, let me know and give me a follow on the Instagram. And what you can expect from me is more videos, more music. I'm gonna be releasing anything, actually. I don't care anymore. I've given up on trying to have a style. I know some producers and labels want that from people, but I don't care because I can't stick to one sound. So expect some bass house from me, expect some poppy stuff, expect some trap, just expect anything. Or don't expect anything, don't expect anything at all. So thank you, my name's Magnus and my next track is out in March. So I'm looking forward to that and I'll show you that one too.